Good morning from the John Nevada Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Wealth and Wisdom with Fred Bell Castro on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich on Friday, September the 23rd, the year 2016. And now here he is, Mr. Fred Bel Castro. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, and old world smiles with you. Smiles with you. And when you're laughing, when you're laughing, oh you're laughing, oh, you're laughing. Mm, when the sun comes shining through. shining through, when you're crying, when you're crying. You bring on the rain. On Stop, the rain. Your Stop your side. Won't you be happy again? Happy again. When, you're smiling. when you're smiling. Keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Good morning and welcome. Oh, well, welcome to the Wealth and Wisdom program. My name is Fred Bell Castro, your host. During the next 30 minutes, you know we're going to talk about using wisdom to grow and protect our wealth. And, of course, as usual, we're broadcasting from the John DeVita Broadcast Center here on the northwest side of Chicago. And yes, you are listening to us on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS out of Norwich, Illinois. All right, I'll start the uh, show this morning by saying, uh, well, how about this? How about if I said, I hate mutual funds? Mutual funds, no good. Send in for a 15-page report on why mutual funds are no good? Do we do that? Do we listen to that? Ah, listen. They're okay. How about 15 reasons why I'm against annuities? Annuities are no good. Send for my free report. You'll get a free report explaining the pitfalls and why annuities are not a good investment. They're just no good. Hey, listen. Give me your 401 because I'm a 401 specialist. Uh, how about instead of that, let's let's uh, let's send in for some free software. This software is o worth over 200 250 dollars, and it shows you how to trade securities so that you uh, never will never run out of money. Do you, do you remember these things that I talk about as far as uh, unverifiable promises? the average return of the average return of this fund gives you this over and over and over again the same the same story the same mantra We're, we have unverifiable promises by various advisors do they ever mathematically verify any of the reasons no oh, come on come on we we don't get into that because you know that uh, the future expectation is uh, not guaranteed because of past performance doesn't guarantee uh, future performance so w there are no guarantees but hey you know that the market has the market has blah 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 on and on and on and on so we we've got all the information that we need we in fact we, I, I listen to this I, you could listen to one one or two radio stations and and uh, they'll tell you that you need the software day trading is the best thing to do I'm a wealth specialist we grow your money. Uh, we specialize in 401s. We specialize in annuities. We specialize in mutual funds. Uh, no, no matter where you turn, you're getting advice. And sometimes it's bad advice. It seems that right now we're getting more advice, more information uh, than we know what to do with. And yet we're more and more uh, apt to listen to someone with a with a nice personality. Hey, he comes across like a, like a nice fella. I remember uh, a woman telling me that she was going to be able to get 27% return on her money because uh, at the seminar, this fella, nice guy, this well-spoken of, very articulate, he had his mother there, and his mother invested with him, so her money was going to be safe. Listen, as wrong or right as they, they may be, and then... Uh, we uh, we listen rather than perhaps l to someone who maybe knows the facts or how to how to build and how to really uh, manage our personal wealth. Uh, you know we we uh, this is my quest. This is my glory. This is the songs. 
we all want to build wealth, uh, right? But we've talked about the wealth and wisdom in this in this program. But we're bombarded, bombarded with information. And I've said a year ago, I did this, uh, I talked about this subject, uh, and I said it's not information, it's misinformation, right? We get misinformation from the newspapers. Why do they tell us what they're telling us? Well, they've got to fill up the columns, don't they? They have to sell advertising, don't they? Oh, reaping profits. So we have, we have a, uh, an objective then, not of delivering accurate information all the time, but to reap profits. Uh, how about the magazines? You know, we, we put out a money magazine, any one of a number of, of magazines in the, in the racks. Uh, the purpose is what? Have you noticed that they'll, uh, if they have a, an advertising from a uh, mutual fund company or a family of funds, that they'll also have a nice complimentary article about that family of funds as well? Uh, but future performance is no guarantee, uh, yet no guarantee that we could buy a book, go over to uh, Eisenhower Library. How many books on investing and saving and wealth creating and wealth uh, substantiating, and all, the, all the various gurus and in, intellectual, uh, unbelievable. And then, of course, we have TV, we have uh, radio and marketing, advertising. We're bombarded constantly with this information. We got famous financial writers that, uh, that are responsible for millions of dollars that have been lost by consumers. But they, uh, they continue right on, they continue marching on, selling CDs, videotapes, seminars, and, and their sponsors' products. It goes on and on. And you folks have turned on the radio, you've turned on this radio, you know where the dials are, you, the, the volume controls, you've heard these. You, you haven't heard me just talk about these, uh, these uh, individuals. But uh, yet, even the best intended information uh, is going to be misguided if it's incomplete. Um, send in for these some of this information for annuities. Send in for some of the information on on uh, mutual funds. It's going to be half truths. It's going to be in, incomplete information. Uh, what their purpose is, is, of course, to sell a product uh, without uh, knowing or thinking about how that the product, that individual club fits into the individual consumer's uh, financial life. Is it right for you? Is it a right fit for you? Uh, remember we used the golf analogy. You're fitted for golf. So do they fit you for these things? Is there a plan? Do you have a plan? Then if you don't have a plan, how do you know? Without a GPS or without a roadmap, how do you know where, you, where you're going, especially in your, in your financial uh, career? There's no, there's no product, there's no one product. I don't care what you might want to call it that can work alone to make everyone's financial life smooth. Could you imagine having the insight to one run product, a, a mutual fund or an annuity or a CD or a stock or a stock portfolio that's going to cure the ills of, of all, uh, all investors or all uh, retirees? There is no such animal. So, what you really have, what you really have, is uh, somebody just trying to sell clubs. I guess the key, the key though, for you, forget what they want to do with all their marketing, their advertising, their their uh, their uh, their sponsorships. The key is to find the right combination. This is for you, folks. Be smart. Listen to me. Find the right combination of products, of clubs, products and use them complementary to one another. Use them in balance. Use them in harmony for your individual program. And when I say program, I'm talking about a plan. Do you have a plan? Is there anything in writing? Do you have something that you can verify? How do you put a mathematical equation to verify these promises that this is going to be a sufficient amount of dollars to guide you through the rest of your life? You know, if you're making sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year now, and then you look at this and say, "Well, our income with Social Security and whatever I could uh, scratch out of the bank accounts is going to give us thirty thousand. We're going to be all right." Do you, do you do you follow it? Do you know what you're going to be able to receive? Satisfactory, not on some promise. Well, the stock market average is, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, fifteen percent, ten percent. This fund is done. 
Is that what you're going to base your future on? Uh, look, uh, the, I talk about misinformation, but when does misinformation talk turn into really uh, poor advice or bad advice? I think it turns into bad advice uh, when, when you start acting on the information uh, without verifying it or evaluating it to, to, uh, to its merits, to the benefit of the, of the entire plan. And if you don't have a plan, how do you verify? How do you know? Uh, yeah. So retirements and retirement pitfalls and uh, some of it is uh, information given to you. Maybe it's maybe it's not quite your fault because we've been we've been taught to to say that this fellow must know what he's doing. He's uh, he wrote a book. This fellow must know what he's doing. After all, he's he's on this program. Listen, uh, all I tell you time after time is that there's more to be gained in eliminating the losses unnecessary wealth transfers than there is to sit down with a guru and try to pick a winner. Unbelievable. Let's let's not do that. Why don't we just look at a plan before we uh, do something uh, as silly as just jumping both feet into uh, into the water. Reminds me of a story. I was a young guy, 18, 20 years old, I'm not quite sure. But I was at that age where, you know, where you're infallible, nothing's going to hurt you. And uh, we were up at Bangs Lake, up in outside of Wisconsin. You've all been there. You, know, you go to the beach, you party. You know, you're with you're with your friends, and uh, it's dark. <laughs> you couldn't see you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was so dark. But we get out to the platform where the where the uh, diving board was out in Bangs Lake. I don't know if you if they still have that or not. This is some years ago. But nevertheless, I would go up on the platform and I look down. I couldn't see the water. I didn't know if there was water down there. I just climbed out of it. But I, what, looking down, you don't see anything. I, I didn't know if I was jumping into a canyon or not. And for a brief moment, I go, whoa, here goes. And I'm not sure where the, uh, where the landing was going to be. Don't do your financial plans like that. Don't do your retirement planning like that, jumping into retirement, not knowing where your, where your next dollar is coming from. Let me give you a, a quote from uh, information that was given to me by uh, Emily Birkin. Now, if you haven't heard of Emily Birkin, she's a finance writer, live like a mensch. She writes a column uh, every every uh, week for Dollar Stretcher. She's also Money Crashers, PT Money, Wise Bread. Uh, she's, a, she's a financial analyst and runs conferences as far as investments are concerned. And she writes, and I'm gonna quote this, because it's not me saying, although I could very well say it. She said, well, you might roll your eyes at someone who talks dreamily of the day when his ship will come in and what he'll do with all that imaginary wealth. Near retirees will often make the exact same mistake. They'll make their plans for retirement contingent on things they cannot control. For instance, finance guru, and then she mentions the guy's name. I don't want to mention the guy's name. For instance, financial guru has suggested that the average investor can count on a 12% return on his or her investments. While I have a great deal of respect for Mr. So-and-so, advice on becoming debt-free, his suggestion that anyone can expect 12% investment returns is simply irresponsible. Do you hear that? It's irresponsible, but individuals can get away with just saying that. You acting on that advice uh, could be in a pot of trouble. Let me get back to the uh, to the article. She said, ignoring where so-and-so got his particular numbers, since market returns are historically closer to 10%, we said that last week, we're looking at 10%, 9%, and uh, that doesn't take into consideration inflation and taxes, and that's what you have the, in, in your checkbook after all that's said and done. Getting back to the article, all investors need to take to heart the fact that past returns, no guarantee for the future, Everyone should have that piece of financial wisdom embroidered on a pillow or even tattooed. Counting on a particular return to have the retirement you dream of means you've given up control over your own future. And she's absolutely right. You know, I've said over and over, you can't control the markets. You can't control the dollar's future, although you have complete control on the money you unnecessarily spend unnecessarily uh, used to settle. 
debt expenses. Let's, let's take our first break here. you enjoyed the Skyliners since I don't have you and that was taken from 1959 1959 perhaps uh, for some of us a, a long time ago a long time ago all right enough said enough said about uh, investing but if you're going to have a retirement facing us uh, you're gonna have to invest for your income you're going to need a strategy my friends a common-sense strategy for steady dependable and long-term, hopefully, long-term income. Let me, uh, let me get to the uh, annuities. I, I spoke about uh, several weeks ago the differences in annuities, an immediate annuity and a deferred income annuity, a deferred annuity for retirement. Uh, let me go to some of the pros and cons, some of the good things about them, some of the bad things about them. With the... Uh, Fixed annuity, you have a guaranteed rate of return. Is that good? You know exactly what you're going to be receiving each and every month, each and every year. The other side of the coin is that the, 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 the fixed rate will be readjusted from time to time, perhaps yearly. And, and even the, the guaranteed minimum rate will be less than you'll, you'll see in some other things. It could even be less than you might see in a CD. But it's steady and it's guaranteed and it's guaranteed for, for the length of uh, a, a period of time. All right, the, another advantage, of course, is that uh, you don't pay taxes on the dollars because they're tax deferred, like your 401s. Uh, they're tax deferred until you start withdrawing the money. The other side of the coin with that is that uh, you probably could lose some value due to uh, inflation. And I'll talk to about inflation in a few minutes. but. Uh, you see, you, so you have the tax-deferred growth, you have a, a, a steady income stream, or you have a steady uh, guaranteed rate, and for some people, that's all they want. If we work out a plan, if you in your plan, that's sufficient, that guaranteed rate is sufficient to take care of you throughout your uh, your lifetime, why not use it as a base? 
I don't care what the what the amount is, it's going to be satisfactory. You have a sufficient amount built up, accumulated, so you don't have to put any of your dollars at risk. Okay, uh, another uh, benefit is, of course, there's no limit on the withdrawals that you could uh, take from your retirement income annuity. No limit on, and uh, the other side of the coin of that is that uh, there's a surrender period. They'll generally have a surrender period going from maybe one year, three years, five years, seven years, and I've seen them as high as nine years, in which there'll be a, uh, there'll be a cost. They say a penalty. I, I don't like to use the word penalty because I, the alternative to these things are like your mutual funds. And uh, in 2008, when the mutual fund went down 33%, and if you would have taken it out, that's one heck of a penalty, isn't it? So to talk about a uh, an annuity's penalty of uh, 1%, 3%, 5%, and that's uh, a decreasing valuation, uh, that's, that's nothing. After a period of five, seven years, there, there is no penalty. You can take out as much, much dollars as you want. The uh, annuity itself doesn't lay claim to any, uh, any costs at that point. There are taxes to be paid under 59 and a half. You have a 10% penalty that you're paid by the IRS, but that's the IRS rules. We have no control over IRS rules. All right, one of the benefits is to be turned into an immediate annuity for guaranteed income. I think I just, I just mentioned that. Uh, you have something that, in which you could have a, uh, and there's of course nothing, no disadvantage to that. The only disadvantage uh, would be that if you took a life income and you had a spouse, and then you died before receiving the full uh, full amount of your uh, of your uh, your your value. Uh, that's your choice. You would make that decision at the time of your retirement. And if I have if I have a wife or a child or someone I want to leave the balance of the money to, you'd be stupid. Well, let me use that word. You'd be stupid to to take a life income and uh, and risk risk uh, losing the uh, the value of your accumulation. Nevertheless, uh, you could take a choice of, of having the money guaranteed for 5, 10, 15, or 20 years or uh, refund certain that uh, your spouse will receive the, uh, the amount of money you, you had in the pot to begin with, uh, minus what you've taken out, uh, for as long as you live. It's a big benefit to have this money guaranteed for, for life or for the life of you and your spouse. Even if you live to be 110, you're going to get that check each and every month. All right. Again, the, the, the benefit would be the, uh, the, uh, the event of death, where the value is paid directly to your beneficiary at the time of your death. It's a contract from an insurance company to your, uh, to your beneficiaries, to your heirs, to your wife, or to whomever you say, and it uh, paid directly to. No probate, no cost, no attorneys are involved. It's just whomever you say should get the money will, will, get, the, will get the dollars. But uh, those are advantages to, uh, to the annuity. The advantages and disadvantages of the immediate annuity, is, it, is this kind of boring? Is this kind of low, very low risk? You know, you, you, but the only problem with the, uh, an immediate annuity is you can't get your money. When we talk about some of the disadvantages of taxes, taxation, that 10% prior to 59 and a half, after 59 and a half, it's pretty much the same as your, your 401k. You're going to pay a tax on the gains. The only difference on an annuity is you have you, you, uh, an exclusion privilege if you withdraw the money uh, uh, on a monthly basis because you have a portion of that money, approximately two-thirds of it is uh, your, your original principal, and so, of course, you're not taxed on the original principal. But uh, that's, that's the way that goes. And rather than just get bogged down with these, with these figures and subjects of comparing one to another, which I don't like to do, the reason is, is that they're all good. They're in their place. They're all good. Should you have them? Yes. Should you have an annuity? Yes. Is it wrong to have mutual funds? No. Is it wrong to have stocks? No. But they're all good. What happens, though, uh, all of us smart people, what happens, talking of wealth and wisdom, if we have a stroke? Do you ever have a client that had a stroke, been in business long enough to have? Yeah, yeah, I've had clients that had dementia, and I've had clients that suffered strokes. Do you know what will happen if you need your signature for your 401k or for your IRAs at the banks or uh, at the uh, various companies that are holding your 401, holding the proceeds, 
If you can't sign, who's going to sign for you? Do you have that? Do you have a good elder, elder law attorney? Do you have the will? How about a trust for your spouse? How about a, how about the, 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 the year after you die, she has a stroke or has dementia? Who's fixed to take care of that money? Who's certified to take care of that money? And don't tell me about this guy or that guy having a fiduciary responsibility. I've heard that word so many times. Barry, Mad uh, Barry Madoff had a, uh, a, fiscal, a fiscal responsibility, too. That means nothing. That's like the order of protection for some of these women that are abused. They got orders of protection, right, and then their, their exes uh, go on to violate these orders. But let's not get into that. Uh, uh, so there's more to... There's more than just buying a mutual fund or listening to a, a guru tell you what to do. Make a plan, will you? Make sure the plan holds water. But uh, let, let's see what else we should be looking for and, uh, and listen to the coasters. I hope that song brought a smile to your face as it did mine, Searching by the Coasters, taken from 1957. All right, the uh, suggestions, the calls that, uh, that I received are sent to area 630-673-4360. If you have any suggestions of what you'd like to hear on this program, give me a call if you have any uh, Anything to say? Any comments about the material that we cover or what you'd like to hear here covered? Again, area 630-673-4360. Particular questions, you could direct them to an email account, fbellsecure at aol.com. That's f-b-e-l-s-e-c-u-r-e -E at aol.com. I'd like to continue to hear from you. And... Uh, answer these questions or give you the answers in 10 minutes. This is a, a free report that I, that I give to the listeners of the program. 
the rate of return they need, how much more they need to save, how long they'll have to work if they don't have a sufficient amount of capital at their time of retirement, or how much they'd have to reduce their standard of living. I wanted to get into uh, a discussion as far as inflation. Guess what? Inflation doesn't stop. It doesn't retire when we do. It continues. It goes on and on. Uh, so the need to outpace and uh, inflation that doesn't stop when we quit working. It becomes even more and more important. So if we're living on a fixed income, you make, you've got to make sure that your strategy, remember the plan, and it's just just the two types of plans that I'll, I'll talk to them. And I, I've wanted to talk to. I've been wanting to talk to mention the. Uh, the four percent withdrawal and the bucket strategies that a lot of people seem to uh, come up with. Uh, let's take that into consideration. Let's look at some of those and uh, as we take inflation into account. I talk about the retirement ready or not. Here I come, ready or not. That's in, that's the retirement. It's going to get here if you're alive. If we're alive at uh, 60, 65 when we when we retire at 55, whatever the case might be. Ready or not, there it is. Are we going to be ready for it when we slap a uh, cost of living or a, a two or three percent uh, money loss of value to it in the terms of inflation? It could be devastating. It could bring us to our knees by the time we're 75, 77 years old. So let's take a look at some of those things. We'll talk about them next week. And in the meantime, we've run out of time. And I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for the support you've given this this fine station and the people that make this all pop uh, possible from Jack FM, uh, from the uh, Norwich Norwich uh, High School, Ridge Ridge uh, Ridgemore High School, Ridgewood High School, and uh, the Mr. John DeVita uh, directing these broadcasts. All right, time's time's up. Do something kind for somebody and make somebody smile. Talk to you next week. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, and the whole world smiles with you. Smiles with you. And when you're laughing, when you're laughing, oh you're laughing, oh, you're laughing. Mm, when the sun comes shining through. shining through, when you're crying, when you're crying. You bring on the rain. On Stop, the rain. Your Stop your side. Won't you be happy again? Happy again. When you're smiling. smiling. Keep on smiling. And the world will smile. <laughs> You have been listening to Wealth and Wisdom with Fred Belcastro from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Friday, September the 23rd, the year 2016. This broadcast was directed by John DeVita. Our special thanks to radio station manager Kevin Seflick of WRHS-FM Norwich and the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chicondo. Until next time, please be safe and thanks for listening. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Wednesday, September the 21st, the year 2016. Thanks for listening and have a good day. And this is Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM, Norwich, Illinois. Have a safe, enjoyable weekend. See you next week.